drama at the movie theater. Yeah. And I ain't talking about watching drama on the screen. I'm talking about actual drama that was inside of the movie theater. That's what I'm going to be addressing on this episode of Real Reading Talk. And oh yes, and of course you already know all my topics are always related to literacy and empowering black people. So stick around. You don't want to miss this episode. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Real Reading Talk. And I am your most gracious host, Miss Sasha. And with Real Reading Talk, I discuss the real systemic issues that are at the very core, the very foundation as to why there are low levels of literacy in the Black community and the ways in which we can combat these issues together. I hope that you all are doing absolutely great. Um, I definitely am looking forward to digging right on in the topic because I got a story for y'all, all all right? So listen up, right? So what happened? This was a couple of days ago. So this was on Sunday when the uh, movie theaters across the country had decided to uh, have their movies only be $4, uh, you know, for everybody, right? So, of course, you know, folks was jumping at the chance to be able to go and catch a movie for $4. When the last time we seen that, right? For all my dollar show folks out there, y'all know what a cheap movie, okay, what that's about, all right? I was telling my kids that. I said, hey, listen, I remember the dollar show, okay? So, but anyway, I'm kind of, you know, digress, you know, going, <laughs> going left a little bit. But so what I did was I took my children uh, to the movie. So my daughter actually, she, cause she was the one who told me about it, by the way, I didn't even know about it. She told me about it. And so she had already planned to meet her friends at the theater. So her friends were already there. And so we arrived and my daughter and her two friends went to see another movie. And I took my other daughter and two of my sons to, to see the other movie. Now I'm going to say this, Actually, I had thought about just dropping them off there and then coming back to get them, okay? So that was my initial thought. I was like, well, maybe, you know, I can, because my daughter is 16, my other daughter is 14. And so I was like, okay, you know, they would be cool. And this is what what I was thinking about before I decided to actually stay. But then as the day went on a little bit, I said, I said, no, I said, you know what? I said, I'm actually, I'm I'm a go you know, in as well. Right. And so, and peep, I went with my gut. I went with my intuition. I said, you know what? Something is telling me, no, don't do that. Let me just go ahead and just stay at the movies with them. So that's what we did. So when we got there though, I saw that the line, you know, of course the line was pretty lengthy. Now it wasn't real, real long, but it was pretty, it was long uh, enough because, you know, as we know, the movie attendance has gone down drastically, even before COVID, you know, once those uh, movie streaming uh, platforms like the Netflix and the Hulus and Disney Pluses and all of them came on board, that was like killing a lot of the the cinema uh, movie going days. All right. So I, like I said, I noticed, you know, it was, you know, a nice amount of people there and I noticed it was a lot of young people. Okay. Without their parents. All right. So I'm talking, I mean, I'm quite sure the ages was probably, you know, 12, 13 to all the way into high school. Okay. So that middle school all the way into high school. So I saw a lot of uh, youth there and it was a lot of, you know, of course, you know, they talking, they, you know, they kicking it and all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Doing their thing or whatever, but I'm still peeping the vibe. I'm just like, I'm like, okay. And so we get in line, you know, get the tickets, get the popcorn. And I still notice again, there are, you got teenagers. They are not, they're not inside of the theater. They're literally like outside, you know, of the theaters. Because as a matter of fact, I had stopped a couple uh, of them and asked them, I said, well, which one? Because I couldn't tell which one was because I was taking my, three of my children went to go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
And then my other daughter, she was going to see, uh, I think it's called Blue Beetle or something. And so I had to ask one of the teenagers, I was like, okay, which one is the theater for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? So she uh, told me or whatever. So we get in there, we have our seat and, you know, we watching the movie, right? So I say probably maybe about 20, maybe about almost 30, about 30 minutes into the movie, we were still, you know, you can hear, you know, kids out there, they out in the hallway, they just talking, they loud and all that. And I'm just like, okay, it wasn't too loud though, to where at least not yet to where like, it was like a distraction, but it was definitely noticeable. Then all of a sudden you hear the kind of, of, of rumblings, like it's about to go down. Okay. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know that sound, you know, the difference between people like, and then, then it's the, what, what you, you know, then it's, then it's the jump off sound. Right. So that's what happened. The jump off sound. And I'm like, and so my daughter, uh, who was 14, she was like, Oh man, what's going on out there? Um, then she trying to figure out a way to go out there. She, I got to use the bathroom. I was like, girl, you better stay next to me. So then maybe about five minutes later, she's like, no, mommy, for real, I got to use it, right? So I'm like, so she go out and use it. She comes back. Then she tells me that somebody had told her that somebody had hit their blind grandma in the movie. And I'm like, what? And so I'm like, I said, okay. So I'm just kind of shaking my head because again, mind you, we're watching a movie and it was still relatively cool. Now I noticed though, that there were some kids who were like, they would come inside, you know, the theater, then they would go, then it would be some who are leaving out or whatever. So it was, we was noticing that kind of traffic. Then next thing, you know, I want to say maybe about 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, a lady comes in there who was, you know, uh, collecting the money for the tickets. She was like, she turned on the lights and was like, okay, everybody has to leave. I'm like, what? So literally this was the first time I ever experienced this in my life <laughs> to where we were told to leave out of the theater. And I'm just like, are you serious? And it is crazy because even when everything was happening, I remember thinking to myself, I said, you know what? I said, these kids, I said, they're going to mess around. I said, number one, they're going to call the police. I already knew that because you already know it. These were, it was basically black kids. Okay. I already knew they were going to call the police. And sure enough, the police were out there. It was like probably a good, maybe about 10 cops, probably even more that were out there. So we had to leave out of the theater and uh, thank God we were able to get our uh, refund. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like it was this big brawl that was happening or anything, but it was just, again, uh, you know, you you got kids, you know what I'm saying? You hear them talking, they like, oh man, you know, you can hear rumblings of people like whatever the case may be, you know, there was something that happened or something was about to happen or whatever case. So apparently it was, it was some kind of fight, but you know, it got definitely got squashed and people had to leave. And even my daughter, she had told me that her and her friends, they actually, somebody went in there and when they were watching a movie, she said they actually had to leave out of their theater. I didn't even know that. Now, mind you, I'm in the theater, I think next to hers or whatever, or maybe a couple theaters down. And I'm like, are you serious? I said, girl, you should have texted me. And told, I would have like, been like, man, we about to leave now. You know, but she said that, um, you know, they, they had to leave out, but then they were, they were able to come back into the theater. So what, I don't think it wasn't that the person who worked there told them to leave. It was, people were like, man, it's about to go down in here. They thought maybe it was about to be some shooting or something that was going to happen. So they had to dip out. And so I'm just like, <sighs> shaking my head. And of course, I mean, just keeping it a buck, y'all. I mean, it was just some hood ninja business, period, full stop. I mean, it was just ridiculous. You had, and then one of the ladies, she wound up, I guess some. it was her daughter 
who have fought, you know, one of the, the other, you know what I'm saying? Youth that was there. And, you know, she started all of a sudden she like goes off and she like, what? You was the one who, and was, you know, and police, mind you, police are still out there. So the police, they were still out there. And what I noticed though, y'all, what they were doing, it was just almost like they was just kind of just monitoring. They were, it, it was like, it was almost like they were looking on at them like, yeah, they, you know, there they go acting wild. You know what I'm saying? It was a mix. You had black and white police officers, but eventually they wind up kind of, you know, cause they were still, everybody was still in the theater. And the reason why I was still there because we would have just left. The only reason why me and my children were still there was because my daughter's friend's mother, she had to wait for her to pick her up because she, you know, her, her mom had, you know, dropped her off. Right. And so, you know, she obviously told her mom when the movie was going to be over. So she, you know, her mom wasn't there yet, but somebody actually was able to come pick up her, her daughter fairly quickly. So that was the only reason why we were still there and was able to see what was happening. And I had to, you know, and I was talking to my children as it was going down, you know, cause we still kind of, you know, just looking around, you know, and I'm observing, looking at everything and just shaking my head and just really, really noticing how we are a people who are still operating in a space of trauma. What I witnessed and what they witnessed was folks who have not addressed their issues of trauma that they have been raised with. Because again, like I just told y'all, it was a mother of the daughter who was fighting. She was about to start going off or whatever the case may be. And I'm sitting up here like, and I was just explaining to my children in real time right there. I said, listen, I said, first of all, I said, number one, when you have a situation like that, I said, you don't never try to run towards the drama. You avoid the drama. You avoid the ignorance. There's actually a verse in the, in the Quran, in, in our holy book that talks about avoiding the ignorant. You don't go near that. You keep your distance because what can happen is that you could be the one who that innocent bystander, you're the one who's looking on and just like how a lot of our young people have been used to doing when there's drama, they run into it with their phones. They, they ready to, to record, all right? And then upload it to TikTok and talk and, you know, and laugh about it or whatever the case. But the thing is, is that it ain't funny if somebody did start pulling out and start blazing all over what? And like I said, my daughter told me, she said something about the girl told her that somebody hit they blind grandma. Now, I, you know, I, I, I'm sitting up here, I'm sure I said, first of all, I'm sitting like, yo, I'm like, really? I said, first of all, why is my thinking like your know, blind grandma at the move. I said, okay. But um, but yeah, but I, I'm just like, what in the world? But again, I have to because you know, I, I put on my 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 social work hat, even though I have no degree in social work. But when you are someone who is constantly trying to heal, constantly trying to be better you can easily identify and spot when you have people who are not healed. People who think that their life is literally supposed to be one big old show. One big old drama, trauma show. And if you have people who are operating in that space as an adult and all... And, and what all they think is what they're supposed to do is everything about to be a fight. Everything, every time you look up, you know what I'm saying? You ready to, to pop off. Then that's, that's pretty much, that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to attract. That's what you're going to attract. And I, and I'm saying this story because I, it was some points that I wanted to make that I wanted you all to walk away with. And the first one is just like I told you all in the beginning. One of the things 
that the one of the lessons from that is that I said, number one, make sure that you pay attention to your gut. That intuition that we have is there for a reason. Use it. You may not be right all the time because you ain't going to because we're human, right? We, we, we don't, we're flawed. We may be thinking something or whatever, and, and it don't be nothing. But a lot of times, when your gut, your intuition is telling you something, follow it, listen to it, pay attention to it. That's what our ancestors, they were thorough at. They were thorough at. And that's something that we got to make sure that we're doing as adults. We're modeling that and we're telling our children that because I've talked to my children about that plenty of times. I've talked to them about listening to their gut, paying attention to how you feel when you're in certain situations. If you're feeling kind of uneasy, if you're thinking that stuff ain't right, listen to that and be like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to pass on that because that could be the very thing that saves your life. That's the first thing. The second thing is paying attention to your surroundings. Paying attention to your surroundings is something that you definitely have to make sure that you're doing. Your children should make sure that they're doing. They should always have their head on a swivel. I had to explain when I told my kids that they're like, oh, head on, what's the head on a swivel? What's that? I'm like, listen, that's code for making sure that you're always looking around. Now you got the, you got them little bobble dolls and all that or whatever, you know, you got, or like the sw in the swivel chair, you know, it's turning around. That's how you should be. And yes, we have to operate like that as black people. This is real talk, real reading talk. We must make sure that we are showing our children to pay attention to their surroundings. The other one. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. Yes, I busted out some Kenny Rogers on y'all, right? Because that's real. You have to know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, when to run. Sometimes as much as you may want to stay and enjoy yourself, or you may think that things is going to change around. When clues and signs are being shown to you that you got to roll out, make sure that you do that, period. Our children should know to do that. That situation right there was a full life skills lesson on, again, like I said, making sure that you avoid trauma. Because that's what that was. That was trauma, drama, all of that. That's all that was. That was an example of people who are trapped in their trauma and they are like, they, they either, they don't know how to get out of it. That's a lot of times it's like that. Or they may know how they just choose not to uh, get out of that trauma because that's what they've been used to. That's something that actually becomes a soothing for them. Actually, when they're introduced to something that's healthier, it's almost like their body rejects it. That's just like somebody who eats a whole bunch of junk food all the time, right? All they do is eat junk, eat junk. And then the moment something healthy comes in their system, it's like, it's like morphing. They like turn into something else, metamorphosis around here. They like, they start convulsing and everything. Like, well, what's this? You know what I'm saying? And again, we have to stop normalizing trauma. We have to quit thinking that trauma is our way of life because it's not, it's not. That comes from a place though. That comes from a place. You know what that place is? That place is called enslavement. It's called being oppressed. That's why these issues, when it when, as it pertains to our trauma and our pain, and us, you know, always trying to go to a, a, a situation where it's it's chaotic, or we think that anytime something happens, uh, -oh, you ready? Dr. Jordi Grew talks about that in post traumatic slave syndrome. It's like 
we could be having a good time. Everything could be cool. We laugh. Hey, what's up, girl? You like, hey, dude, what's up? But it's always in the back of your mind, you thinking like, okay, all right, some pop off. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. Like we stay warm, right? You know, we always, it's always something brewing and we could be having a great time. And you know, that's, that's part of the post-traumatic stress that we deal with from slavery. That's what that is. That's why Dr. Joy DeGruy is masterful at explaining that. Because that's exactly what we be dealing with. It's always, we can't never just chill, relax, be present in the moment. It's always, okay, some about to pop off. And that's how, when you know that, that's when we have to make sure that we are actually naming it and addressing it. And don't let anybody try to tell you anything different. But I'm here to tell you on Real Reading Talk that we can actually heal. We can actually do better. And we will do better. But we have to want it. We have to want it in our hearts and then train our brains to be able to be in situations where we're like, you know what? Okay, this is good. This is healthy. Great. All right. This is not good, not healthy. All right, cool. Well, we we stand away from that. We have to develop those practices ASAP. And another thing too, and I'm just keeping it a buck. And I had to tell my kids this, and I and I say this to myself. Everybody don't want to be saved. Everybody don't want to be saved. And that's just the reality of it. You have folks for real, for real. They are content where they are. And they like, just leave me the heck alone. Let me do me. And all you got to do for real, for real with them. You just pray from afar period full stop sorry i usually don't do this but add something in the oven <laughs> sorry y'all had to i was like wait a minute smelling something hold up but yes you have to pray from afar and these could be people in your family. You know what I'm talking about. I remember I had a conversation with my students, uh, one of my older, other students' uh, parent before. And she was just telling me about how there was some drama happening in her family. And it was craziness, fights popping off. And these were like, you know, people, I, I want to say like Pat, like in their 50s and 60s and stuff. And I was just like, and she, and she was somebody, she was just like, I want better for my family. I don't want to have to keep dealing with this. I don't want, she was talking about how the little kids, you know, she got to hurry up. They got to gather the little kids and they got to hurry up and run and all of that type of stuff. And, you know, get them in another, you know, all of that stuff that a lot of us have seen in the black community. How many times we've heard comedians make jokes about it. We're used to joking and laughing about our pain. And I get it to a certain extent because I, yeah, I'm not acting like I haven't laughed at comedians jokes about the family fight or getting a whooping and all these other things. But then after a while, it's like, we got to, we got to sit for a minute. And when you start sitting still and being present, you're like, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. How is that affecting me and my children? Because I'm doing the same thing that I saw what was being done in my family and my kids. I'm looking at their reactions. I'm watching them grow up and seeing how they're reacting and responding to this. And it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. It's hurtful. It's painful. In fact, you start to feel those who want to heal. You start to feel your, your conscience starts bothering you. It ain't sitting well with you no more. You're like, okay, I know this was done to me and everything. I know I saw this and I, quote unquote, you know, we hear the same. You turned out all right. You know, how many times we didn't heard that, right? You good. You got your degree and you know, you ain't got married and kids and all that. You good. 
No, 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 no. Even if that is the case, we still have issues in our community where we have high levels of divorce, high levels of women uh, headed households in our community. We have high levels of illiteracy in our community. We have high levels of, you know, just a, a, a lot of folks dealing with pain. Folks dealing with mental health issues, right? These are things that are real in our community. And just like I started off the episode explaining to you all, that right there, what I saw, I saw the face of a woman, because she actually, when we were leaving, we were, you know, finally able to leave. She actually had to like walk because my kids were already walking and she was like walking, you know, not again, not she oblivious because she on a hundred and she like walked in between my children. I got to look at her and I'm just looking Now All you see is just, just like zoned out pain. Every, you know, it's just all of this. And of course, then you'll have folks, well, see, they shouldn't have did that. Even if somebody, and that's the thing, even if somebody does do something to someone, whether they bumped them on accident, they said something, we, when you're healing and when you realize that, wait a minute, do I really want to try to go there and make this turn into something? Or can I just simply communicate to that person? Um, you know, excuse me, you know, you have made a mistake and, you know, bump my, my grandmother, you know. Can, can it be that? Can the grace be there? Can the mercy be there? Yes, it can. It can. And we have to start saying that. We have to start saying that to ourselves. We have to start teaching our children that. But the only way that can happen is if we are intent upon making sure that we are healing consistently that we are doing things like, that's why I constantly talk about that book, Post-Traumatic uh, Stress uh, Syndrome, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. I, I always jack up her title. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, Post-Traumatic by jo Dr. Joy DeGruy, okay? I talk about that book heavily, consistently, constantly, incessantly, okay? Why am I doing that? Because she is somebody who's coined that term to the T, and has broken down big time all of the different things that I'm talking about, just like the scenario I gave. Somebody, they warm, they can't wait. And then you got, you got the, our kids, because they're so used to, they got the, oh, shoot, oh, shoot, ready to upload. Like, really? I had to get on, I had to get on my daughters. Mm-hmm. But Again, they know, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I explained to them, I say, hey, listen, y'all, you know, I, I know what kind of era you all are, are, are growing up in. I get it. And I'm not saying the phones aren't necessary, as we know, just like in the Montgomery brawl, right? <laughs> but that turn up was a turn up with a purpose. That was a turn up with a purpose. That man, as we remember, he was as black folks tend to do was giving grace. Having, trying to talk, trying to let, hey, look, this is why I'm doing it. I asked you, I'm being nice, I'm telling you. But then what? The oppressors, the barbarism came out of them and they showed their hand. But guess what? The time to turn up, the time to meet somebody with force is when they are the aggressor towards you. That man was supposed to be defended. And that's the thing. And that's what we have to normalize in our community. We don't just say, get rid of fighting all together. Don't ever fight nobody. Don't ever be in a position, you know what I'm saying? Don't ever, you know, prepare yourself to defend yourself or, you know what I'm saying? Just let people just beat on you and just pray and march. And nah, nah, we don't do that. Because truth be told, a lot of people don't know this, or, or if they do, they don't talk about this. Even when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., when they were marching, they actually had folks around them who was, they, they, they were strapped. 
just in case something went off, went off for real, for real. They had people around them who were strapped. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah, they was a they they were saying nonviolence, but trust and believe. Just like that book, that book title, that nonviolent issue gets you killed. It will. It ain't, but so far you could take the nonviolence if somebody is being an aggressor towards you. That's your God given right. But our problem and the things that we got to get rid of is that we've taken that violence and we turn on each other. And just like Dr. Amos Wilson talked about that black on black crime, that black on black violence, that I'm about to go off, that's in service of white domination. So when you understand that, when you understand who you're serving, when you do that, then you begin to start to peel back and be like, oh, okay, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. We killing each other. We beating each other up. Our kids are growing up seeing that. Our kids are going to the schools wanting to fight at three and four years old in preschool, pre-K, barely can say their letters, barely know their letters, but they know how to ball up a fist and they know how to throw a jab. They know how to throw a right hook. They know how to do uppercuts. No problem. But you try to get them to be able to identify their letters and the sounds of the letters. It's like a blank stare. That's a problem. And that's why I'm talking about it. And that's why I'm addressing it. Because when we have problems, we have to address it. We can't be afraid to address the elephants in the room, the trauma in the room, the drama in the room, the craziness in the room. We can't be afraid to do that. And are, are we going to be perfect? No. Are we going to always get it right? No, we're not because we're human. However, if we all start operating in a space of being on code, in a space of saying, you know what? We are, are going to always be constantly healing we're going to hold each other accountable. I'm going to first hold myself accountable and I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to check you if I see that is craziness going on. And that's the vibe that we have to be on. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close it out uh, with this episode of Real Reading Talk. I hope that you all gain benefit from it. Um, you know, like I said, we can do this. And we have to believe that we can, all right? And the belief is in our hearts. We train our brains to be disciplined, to do the actions, take the necessary steps to be able to heal so that we can be better for ourselves, better for our children, better for the community, better for the world, period. All right, thank you all for listening. Um, you have been tuned in to another episode of Real Reading Talk. I am your most gracious host, Miss Sasha. And I thank you all for listening. And remember, reading is freedom. Peace. Right, y'all? Yes, yes, indeed. Y'all know how I do it. I try to bring it. I try to make sure that every episode that I am dropping gems, and even when I have, of course, my guests on, they're dropping gems as well, because we are about empowerment. And my lane, my goal is to get our people back into reading because truth, truth be told y'all, when our people are reading like we should be, when we are valuing that literacy, when we are valuing that empowerment, just like I explained during the episode, all of that stuff that I talked to you all about during this particular episode, majority of that stuff would not even exist. It will not. It won't be no room for it. Because when you are on a mission to be the best version of yourself, to say, no, I'm not going to keep repeating this crap that I've been a part of. I'm, I'm going to stop always trying to survive. I want to actually thrive. When you start having that mindset, psh, please, we'll be unstoppable, period. So I definitely, again, hope that you all gain those uh, those nuggets. Um, and I hope that you all are still doing whatever it is that you can to make sure that you are implementing these practices of consistency, implementing the practices of uh, creating a culture of literacy in your families. 
So now, again, housekeeping time. Just to remind you all, I am a pre-K through fourth grade reading tutor, okay? So you get your babies up in my sessions, okay? All right? So all you got to do is go to abclearntutoring.com, click on that free reading assessment. Your baby, your precious, should at the age, even, hey, listen, you got kids who two and three and they already know their letters their sounds of their letters but definitely if your child is three going on four and they're still they're not uh able to identify those letters and the sounds of those letters you need to come holler at me okay for real i can help your babies out trust and believe okay i got receipts go to my website check out the testimonials all right i'm also a uh tutor a, a certified dyslexia tutor and let me add to, uh, to my tutoring repertoire. I also am able to tutor adults who have disabilities. That's right. I mean, that's something that I'm, I'm very uh, proud to say that I, I was able to add uh, to my uh, tutoring uh, accolades, if you will. Uh, shout out to Ebony. I gotta give her a shout out because she uh, was the one who told me about the program awesome program so please go to my website again um, if you are looking for a tutor for your pre-k through fourth grader or you know someone who has a disability and they are an adult and they need help with their reading I can help them with their reading as well and also I'm the founder and executive director of ABC Read y'all that's right our mission is to develop and nurture a culture of literacy in black and underserved communities period and we've been doing it since 2014, giving out books. We've, been, we've given away over 5,600 books, close to 5,700 books already. And I'm talking about great books, not just any old books, just because somebody throwing books away and then we talking about getting them and, and send them to the community. No, books like this, this book that, like this book that I've been reading, okay? The Coming, a novel by Daniel Black, all right? Um, books that represents our black children, all right? Black culture, black experiences, having dynamic reading events and making sure that we're promoting healthy eating, making sure they have things like fresh fruits, all right? Some good nutritious snacks, okay? These are things that we do because we know these are the things that help contribute to a person being able to be healthy minded, okay? And uh, also, Again, um, I want you all to make sure you subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. That is Reading is Freedom. This episode will be uploaded to, that, to there as well. And I have a plethora of read alouds on there for the whole family, all right? And I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, last thing. How can I forget? Bam. My, I got it all, okay? Oh, I got it all. It, messing up stuff all right reading is freedom y'all got my merch on okay i got the merch on reading is freedom that is the brand that i came up with okay because our literacy should always be connected to our liberation okay and uh so with that being said check out my store reading is freedom dot store i have plenty of people who gotten the shirts they got our mugs hats bags and they were just like, thank you. They appreciate it. They love it. You make sure you get yours, okay? Last two things. I, like I told you, I always like to tell you all about the book that I'm currently reading. So this is one of the books. I'm actually reading a couple books. This book, The Coming, it's a novel by Dr. Daniel Black. And this is a realistic fiction. And he is telling the story of our ancestors and what they were dealing with on that traumatic, horrible, boat ride uh, to uh, the Americas to build it up to what it is today. But he is telling the story, again, like I said, um, from the standpoint of our enslaved ancestors and the things that they endured based off of, you know, information that's out there from, you know, enslaved narratives and different things of that nature. This book ain't no joke. It's really from, it's kind of a hard read. It's an easy read. Like it's very, it's like a kind of poetic in a sense, um, the way it's written, um, a lot of short sentences, you know, a lot of, it, it, it's, it's definitely uh, something that affects your heart. Okay. 
and you know I do recommend that you get it if you are somebody who is into wanting to learn more about black history and our black culture black experiences as we know it did not start on the slave plantation but that is the big interruption the big disruption that happened to our people and we must learn about it so that we can always remember to say never again never again and I want to end with the quote as well so I have a quote by Muhammad Ali and the quote is you don't lose if you get knocked down you lose if you stay down Muhammad Ali alright y'all that's it I'm out of here. I appreciate you all so much for listening. Again, my name is Ms. Seisha. This was another episode of Real Reading Talk. And this was episode 13. And I thank you all for listening. Make sure you share, like, comment, and, 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 and hit the notification bell, all of that great stuff. All right, y'all, with that being said, remember to please keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day. And remember, reading is freedom.